okay so we are starting our new topic that is photosynthesis okay so our new topic is to be photosynthesis okay our new topic is to be photosynthesis and we will be covering this session very short photosynthesis so what is photosynthesis photosynthesis is making of food or what we call as carbohydrates in the green parts of plants okay making of food in the green parts of plant in presence of sunlight in presence of sunlight and where oxygen is released as a byproduct so our basic equation in this photosynthesis is understood as C6H12O6 plus 12H2O is equals to here sunlight comes acts as catalyst you may uh, call it as catalyst uh, C6 uh, sorry 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 I wrote it wrong this is 6 CO2 plus 12 H2 is equal to C6 H12 O6 plus 6 H2 O plus 6 O2 okay this O H2 O C6 is released as a transpiration transpiration loss and see this O2 is released as a byproduct okay so this is our basic equation so and we have to talk about the importance of photosynthesis importance of photosynthesis okay so what is the importance of photosynthesis in our life it is the primary source of food so what is the primary source of food that means in in case of plants the plants first synthesize the food in them by fixing carbon dioxide in them and by using sunlight so in our in our food chain it is called as producer because of the plants our food chain is alive and because of the plants our whole bio, 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 biosphere is alive so it is the primary source of food and the second point is release of O2 so plants basically release O2 as a byproduct in the uh, as a byproduct of the photosynthesis which is used which is our respiratory which is our respiratory substance in case of animals and it is the oxygen gas which keeps the animal world alive okay animal worlds alive so in the next slide we will talking about some experiment that are performed by various scientists okay 
so this is x experiments so what are these experiments okay this is first experiment this is our first experiment which proves that sunlight is essential for photosynthesis sunlight is essential for photosynthesis okay so what is the experiment here sunlight is essential for photosynthesis so basically so basically let's assume that it's a leaf okay and here the half leaf is covered this half leaf is covered okay so when the whole leaf is exposed to sunlight okay it is exposed to sunlight then in the cover portion there is no light and in the open portion there is light and surprisingly after treating it on the sunlight the cover portion shows no starch and the open portion shows starch so what is the conclusion so what is the conclusion the conclusion is that starch formation depends on sunlight okay and the second conclusion is starch formation depends on the green parts of plants okay so this is the first experiment and the second experiment which is given in our ncert okay the second experiment is about that this starch this starch formation depends on co2 this experiment is proof of it okay so how starch formation is dependent on co2 
okay so basically in this experiment we have a leaf which is partially covered sorry the leaf is not partially covered it is a leaf okay it is a leaf and there is a KOA soaked cotton and there is a KO8 KO8 soaked cotton okay there is KO8 soaked cotton and this KO8 soaked cotton is placed over half of the leaf this is this is this is this is KO8 soaked cotton placed over half of the leaf okay this is KO8 soaked cotton and the half of the leaf is is open okay there is no soaked soaked uh, KO8 soaked cotton in it and this KO8 KO8 soaked cotton is a CO2 absorber okay this K H soft cotton is a CO2 absorber and when exposed to sunlight exposed to sunlight okay when this is exposed to sunlight the half leaf where the K H soft cotton was placed there is found there is no starch whereas the open portion of the leaf there is starch starch and there is no starch okay and the uh, where kw soaked cotton was placed there was found there there was no starch in it and the open portion of the leaf contains starch so what does it mean the kw the kw soaked cotton where placed have has absorbed all the CO2 around it. So basically here is no CO2. And here CO2 is available. And where CO2 is not available, starch is not formed. So what is our conclusion from this experiment? Our conclusion is that starch formation depends on co2 this is our second conclusion and we have two experiments okay so from the next slide we have to learn about some scientists and their experiments okay so our new topic is scientists and their experiments okay the first scientist we are talking about here is Joseph Priestley. Joseph Priestley. Okay. So what has he done in his life? Okay. So we are, we are, we are going we are going to learn about Joseph Priestley. Okay. So basically, Joseph Priestley in seventeen seventy four. discovered O2 this 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 1774 thing is given in NCERT okay I am talking only about NCERT I am explaining the data to you according to NCERT the data which are given in NCERT I am or I am only focusing on that content okay so do not skip this data 1774 discovered O2 and 
in 1770 he performed a experiment that is called as burning candle experiment so basically what has he done he has taken a bell jar is a bell jar and in this bell jar he has taken a burning candle there is a burning candle okay it doesn't look like a burning candle plus but please assume that it is a burning ca candle my drawing is so horrible okay and this burning candle soon gets extinguished extinguished in closed container okay so this by basically this burning candle soon gets extinguished in the closed container but surprisingly in the same when this same belger in the same belger a burning candle was there and a mice Uh, no 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 sorry what no mice no mice a burning candle <coughs> a burning candle was placed there and and also a mint plant a mint plant this is a mint plant mint plant was placed in this bell jar okay so in the presence of this mean paint plant the burning candle continued burning okay <coughs> so and the and this burning candle can be replaced by mice this burning candle can be placed by mice okay so if a mice if you if you close a mice in the bell jar the mice will soon die and if the same mice were was present in the bell jar in the presence of a mint plant the mice will leave okay so what was the conclusion out of it so what was the con conclusion okay the conclusion that Joseph Priestley has arrived by this experiment was plant restore to the air whatever breathing animal animal and candle remove. So he has understood that this this particular candle or mice remove something from the air remove something from, from the air and the same thing and the same thing is restored by the mint plant okay <clears throat> so its conclusion in the experiment was plant restore plant restore to the air what 
এভার ভিবিং অ্যানিম্যাল অর ক্যান্ডেল remove okay this is the conclusion out of it plant restore to the air whatever breathing animal or candle remove the conclusion and the experiments are very important and it is given in the ncrt so you must remember it okay so in the next experiments we'll talk we'll be talking about jan insen house okay so our next experiment uh, our next scientist are jan insen house h o u s z okay jan insen house he proved that he proved that by his experiment that sunlight is essential for the process of plant which purifies the air okay so he has proved that sunlight is the essential sunlight is essential for the process of plant which purifies air okay so basically he has understood the importance of sunlight in this process of photosynthesis or whatever it was called in that era of jan insen house and the second conclusion he has proved or the second conclusion he has proved from experiment that only green parts of plant can release o2 so this is the this is a very important statement and in this statement two things are hidden that only green parts can release this only release o2 and this o2 has came in the picture now till now in the experiment of joseph priestley the o2 has not come because joseph priestley cannot could not found that the in this process, process of photosynthesis o2 is released but jan insen house first found that the release of o2 is happening in this process and it is done in the in the green parts of the plants only and sunlight is essential of this sunlight is essential for the process so there are basically three main parts that one is sunlight and the second is green part and the third is the releasing of o2 so let's uh, let us so let us talk about the experiment of the jan insen house that he was talking about the experiment is it is water okay and here is aquatic plant and here is aquatic plant the aquatic plant he has taken for the experiment was hydrilla hydrilla or aquatic plant so in the presence of the sunlight in the presence of the sunlight in the presence of the sunlight 
he has seen that only the green parts only only the green parts only what is what is being color only the green parts of the hydrilla released oxygen okay this is oxygen and whereas the non green parts did not release oxygen so he had understood three the first thing that he's understood that sunlight is essential which is covered in our first statement that sunlight is of course essential and the second point is only green parts can release o2 this is the second this is the second statement which uh, which we have already given and the third is that is the release of the o2 okay so basically this o2 is released from the green parts so this is the third statement of the jain in general okay so here is basically three conclusions that is first the sunlight is essential second is, second is the only green parts Uh, can participate in the uh, releasing of O2, and the third is the O2 itself is the important part uh, uh, in the experiment with Jan Insen. You have to remember it. All the data are from extracted from NCERT. Okay. So our next scientist here is our next scientist here is Julius von Sachs. Julius von Sachs. So Julius von Sachs has proven. First, what is what what has he proven? Julius von Sachs has proven one that glucose is produced when. plants grow okay and second he has told us that this glucose is produced in the special bodies of plant of plants which in today which in today known as chloroplast chloroplast in that era it it was not known that the special bodies were chloroplast john julius von sachs told us that glucose is being produced in the special bodies which today is known as chloroplast Chloroplast. Okay. And the third point he has given to us that is, glucose is stored as starch. Is very important. So basically, he has provided some important things. The first thing is the first thing is. the first thing about the scientist is he talked about glucose first glucose then he talked about special body formation of glucose in the special body third he wa he told us that the glucose is stored as starch in the plant body okay so so far we have what have, what we have seen is the in the joseph priestley the burning candle experiment okay bell jar mint plant okay and in joseph priestley is the scientist who has discovered oxygen and the second scientist we have shown is the jan insen house who told us the sunlight is essential for the process of plant which purifies air second is second he told us that only green parts of the plant can, plant can release o2 okay so in case of jan insen house there are three basic 
three basic things we have to remember that first is the importance of sunlight second is the importance of green path and the third is the release of the O2 and our third scientist is Julius von Sachs and what is the canos and what we have to remember about Julius von Sachs is he told about glucose first in for photosynthesis okay he told that glucose is produced when plants grow and the second thing we have to remember about Julius von Sachs is he has provided he has he told us first that the glucose is produced in plants in the special body the special bodies which are today known as chloroplast in that era it was called special bodies okay and the third thing about we have to remember is of Julius in case of Julius von Sachs is glucose is stored as starch so this, these are three things about Julius von Sachs first is glucose second is special body and third is starch okay so in the next lecture we will be talking about uh, the action spectrum and the absorption spectrum and the same lecture we will be covering the experiment of TW Engelman because the experiment of the TW Engelman are closely related to the action spectrum and the absorption spectrum we will be covering this topic together and compactly the next lecture will be very interesting Thank you.